ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Infection Podcast. We're your uh, weekly source for the latest ongoings in and around the video game industry with a little bit of, uh, or sometimes maybe a little bit too much, uh, common sense political takes here and there. My name is Nick Craig. You can find me on social media at Nicholas M. Craig. Joining me in this uh, crazy world we live in, Brian with an eye alter. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Not too much. Of course, if you want to find me, you can get me at Boise Computer on Twitter or at Brian Aldridge on Gab, Parlor, Getter, Truth Social, and wherever else we end up landing. Uh, now, what do you want to do? You want to lead? You want to talk? Or you want to wait for the end to to mention? Uh, well, now you already left the cat at the back, so now you got to go. Now you got to go for it. <laughs> so we had our our live recording. They got flagged because I guess we said COVID misinformation. Now well, I, that, they didn't give us a timestamp. Yeah, accurate statement, of course. <laughs> Because they said we ha- we cannot see anything that that's doesn't coincide or go exactly with the World Health Organization. If you say anything that isn't what the he- World Health World Health Organization says, you're not allowed to say it on YouTube. So interesting. Yes. Um, but, so with that, I, I could I didn't know when we talked about it, so I couldn't really say, "Hey, let's go look and see where this was at," because I don't remember talking about it. Likewise. So with that, um, Brian and I spun up a uh, Rumble channel uh, in the last couple of days. So we'll be cross posting the episodes on YouTube and Rumble. I'm not I'm not a big fan of Rumble. I think it's kind of a shitty platform personally. Um, but but it is an alternative. So um, yep. we'll still have the YouTube on the website. We'll get a Rumble link up there. But uh, yes, you know, after Brian, after 426 episodes, I mean, this is the first time we've ever really gotten slapped and it's not a not a significant slap, but uh but enough yeah. to um, to uh, to to make us op- get another platform in here, which isn't the uh, which isn't the worst thing in the world. So we'll because yeah, uh, they they don't they don't really give you any like leeway. No. Like if you don't agree with our opinion, you, there's mm-hmm. no freedom of speech on YouTube. It's just the no. way it is. No, of course not. Yeah, that, in typical democratic fashion. Um, so yeah, check us out if you're a Rumble person. Good luck using the search because it doesn't work. But uh, we'll put a link. <laughs> we'll put a link on our website for. Uh, for the for the rumble uh, for the rumble channel, so you can uh, check that out. And go Speaking- yeah, go follow it if you have a rumble account, right? Go follow yes. it so that way you get notifications for when we do yeah. re- upload over there. Uh, speaking of technology that doesn't work, uh, Stadia, which was uh, great technology that uh, oh, worked, yeah. but uh, just didn't really uh, have a place at all. And Brian, you were you have uh, for people that are maybe new to the show. You have a lot of experience. You actually were a contractor with Google for a period of time. And one of their big businesses is not the commercial facing things. It's the yeah. white label services that they can sell to other things. So can you explain what that white label is and, and, and what exactly yeah. is going on here? Well, so let's roll back to Google Plus. <laughs> back in the day when, when Google Plus was a thing, uh, they had their Hangouts. And the Hangouts, where people could jump into a chat room with video, which was fairly new at the time. You know, mm-hmm. there were meeting apps, but there wasn't anything really where you could just jump in for free and have these group chats. And so that's one thing where how Nick and I got to know each other is a friend and I made an app that pretty much made a directory of all of the Hangouts in the world. And, uh, and, and that was the, the main app that people were using to do that. And so Google liked what we did. They started using it internally. So then they asked us to go and work for them um, after they shut us down because they, uh, they we were Change a risk. The API. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We were, we, well, the, the, and the crazy thing is we were broadcasting the Obama internal secret hangout because they didn't communicate with us. We made all this on our own and they yeah. never told us there were secret channels internally. And you know, the engineers inside of the company were using our app without telling us. And so we were broadcasting whatever they saw. I mean, we didn't know that there was a different channel that they never showed to us. So yeah. after that, they contacted us, asked us to put in a little bit of a workaround so that we weren't broadcasting Obama's hangouts. Oh, and uh, yeah, gotta be and, and it kind of got us in contact. Trump's hangouts let air it all out. Obama's yeah, hangouts. Just no, let, no, let no, no. Yeah, yeah, don't 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 show that. those at all. <laughs> but people don't realize that the real thing behind the hangouts was they were testing and trying to get a lot of people to use the the streaming setup that they created. They had a data center with a bunch of encoders, and uh, Chi Chu was the one who headed that up in uh, Seattle. Well, uh, Kirkland, right? I think Kirkland outside of Seattle. And 
he that's what they did is they they had these data centers were sitting there and trying to figure out how do we optimize the codex and make it so that we can have all these people doing hangouts at the same time because everything was broadcast back to their data centers and then would be dr- distributed out to people and so they're they're low testing well it, then you notice they shut it down uh, and what did they put in its place they had a a business version of it that's what google likes to do they like to mm-hmm. put out a product and say oh this is for the consumer you'll have fun with this then they shut that down and then they roll out something that is for a business because the consumer has tested it. They usually offer it to you for free, so you can't really complain once it's shut down. I'm still surprised that Google Voice is out there. Feed uh, burner. And they usually, yeah. yeah th- then they usually shut it down, and and then they offer out a separate paid product that's under the Google Apps or you know some other service. That's exactly if if you really watched what they were planning on doing, that's what they were planning on doing with this up until recently, because I guess they decided. There just wasn't enough. Well, they they didn't get enough people, I think, to really test it thoroughly, right? There was a minimal amount of users on this thing. And I, I think that they realized COVID, they were thinking COVID was going to be a big push for this. Everybody was going to be doing game development remote or things maybe that were graphically intensive remotely, which is what this is made for. But people are going back into the office. There's just not a desire for this, you know, the uh, covid why do you think they pushed so hard for COVID? <laughs> they wanted this to uh, get people remotely working and do all this, uh, and it didn't happen. And so people are going back in the office, and they don't need a device like this. I'm sure there's use cases for it, but not enough to support a whole department at Google to you know put yeah. these these hardware devices that they they give to a person and it connects to. So the you would need desktop. you would need a large company to buy you know a thousand of these to distribute all across their workforce. Yeah. Uh, that's how Google. That's the that's the term of white label. And then internally they yeah. give it you know this other company would give it their own name, but it would be Google's yeah. back end system. So between really the consumer doing, side, yeah. between the consumer side being a total disaster, Stadia itself, uh, you know, doomed from day one. Um, and it appears yeah. that the uh, the commercial side of it, if you'll call it that, is also uh, is also dealing with the uh, is also dealing with the same fate. So, um, yeah, yeah, that is uh, that's uh, that's what we're looking at with Stadia. It's uh, been a, a slow death, but it's official. Uh, yeah. It will officially be dead, dead. There's not much. Uh, there's not there's going to be literally nothing left of it at all. Well, and so they're pivoting to something different. Oh, uh, and really? so what they're what. What they're going to do is unveil what they call Google Cloud for live games. Uh, and this okay. is going to be, this is a service that's under the whole um, Google Cloud infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And so you can have serve, so I don't know if you can see, they have a, Press a page dedicated to this where you can get started for free. I haven't really gone through and played with it at all, but it does live services. Um, Boy, Google really Game does servers. a hell of a job with their pages. These are these web pages that they spin up as for solutions look like garbage. They all look the same. I mean, there's just nothing on here. Yeah, well, they kind of have a standard template that you, you yeah, yeah. paste these. It looks like a, it's like a wiki. <laughs> it's just it's all it kind really, of fit in a wiki format. It really looks like they're doing like analytics. I mean, it yeah. kind of fit that fits somewhat into their business model, kind of like the analytics for YouTube having analytics for games, also hosting databases for games under the Google Cloud service so that there's a central database that all the games are connecting to, uh, and, and plugging in features that, that these games can use. And now, it works with I could Unity, think, Unreal Engine. I could think of a use case here. Maybe you are a, uh, indie or a smaller game where, pri- where cost really is important. Maybe you use some of their analytics to determine when you need to be spinning up servers and whatnot to handle load is that, I mean, maybe that's a, that's a use case for this, but even with this, yeah. it seems very, 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 very niche. I can't imagine anybody is going to be beating down the doors to, to, to try this. I just, I can't really think of a use case. Yeah. And they have what they call cloud spanner, which supports large player populations. So that's, they're claiming it's without sharding, without over provisioning people onto servers. We'll see how that works because I've not seen that work well for very many other places. Um, they talk about analytics and AI for helping to monetize. Now, maybe that's giving smarter ads to people. Uh, mm-hmm. That That's a possibility. And, and, and it supposedly will integrate these different open source tools as well. So this is very new. This was just announced, what, in the last 
couple days, I think. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, within the, yeah, literally, like, within the last, like, between the last week. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I guess um, I, I'm not sure who is going to be, uh, again, I don't know who's going to be beating down the doors on it. Um, you know, most of these companies already have the infrastructure. They're doing this stuff internally or they're yeah. paying somebody else to do it. Um, so I'm just not sure that they're going to be jumping, especially if, now if they're already somewhat integrated in Google's other ecosystems, but they're yeah. probably not. Everybody's using AWS or Azure. So I, I know yeah. most people are not everybody, but a lot of like a lot of larger services are using um, any sort of AWS, EC2, whatever it is. And, and Microsoft's yeah. Azure. So I guess yeah. if you're, because I know Unity is pretty well connected with some of the Google stuff. So maybe if you're a Unity dev and you're using Google storage for or using Google servers for gaming, this is just kind of a, another yep. little icing on the cake. But I can't imagine there's going to be a massive flock to it. Well, and I think that usually what they'll do is those, that list of, of the companies that are currently using this, those are the ones that they set it up and tested with. <laughs> That's Probably. how they got this whole thing going. You know, for like King, which makes mobile it's a big, games. It's a lot a of big this list. Is, yeah, there's I mean, some big names big in there. Niantic, so you got Sega, Nintendo, Square Enix, 2K, Ubisoft, Activision, Blizzard. The only thing missing on here is Epic. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, EA Epic's, and... Gonna, Epic's doing a lot of their own analytics and yeah. services. I'm just saying, like, like, so they're, this is <laughs> they're huge. They're going to do their own thing. Netmarble, yeah, I mean, yeah, this, we'll is, see. this is pretty big. Hmm. So, so, yeah, uh, servers, but notice what databases, this says. analytics. Some Google Cloud customers in gaming. So this just means that these companies use Google Cloud. For in something. some way or another. In some way. So they could use it for st storage on email. <laughs> and yep. I guess that's how they're going to classify it because they're not using this service. That's hmm. Wording is important. Well, and, and that's the thing is that they're using the compute engine part of it. They're using these Kubernetes uh, uh, engine. Kubernetes stuff. And, yeah. then, yeah, and then Cloud Armor. So well, I guess FD or Firewall. DDoS protection, things like that. Yeah. Well, um, I wish I could say I wish them luck, but the people at Stadia were really mean to us, so no, I don't wish them luck. <laughs> the hell with them and everything to do with them. Seriously, they were they were mean. So the hell with yeah, them. they were they weren't very pleasant to deal with. No, not at all. So um, so sad, too bad. Uh, let's uh, kind of keep it on the same vein, but talk about a completely different company, Microsoft. Brian, they're yeah. you know, they've already got Game Pass, super hot. Everybody's everybody's using it. Um, the Xbox is 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 a, is a po of course a popular system, not as popular as the mm -hmm. uh, the the PlayStation. But everything is se seemingly trending pretty well for Microsoft, and they made a pretty big announcement this week that they're partnering with a cloud gaming platform. What? Why are we doing this when we have X Cloud or whatever it's called for for gaming? What's what's going on with this? I don't understand. Well, one interesting thing is it's going to bring all the Xbox PC games to this service. Hmm. And it also applies to the Activision Blizzard games, if that completes. It will run on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and Android TV. They have okay. data centers that are in, uh, six in the United States, as well as ones in the UK, France, Italy, Spain, Sweden, Slovakia, Romania, Ukraine, and Serbia. And I'm sure that'll, that'll grow. Man, but this is going to be, <laughs> well, here, listen to this. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I had to. I'm sorry, I just, I had to. So this is the largest independent cloud gaming provider in the world, uh, and it's actually a Ukrainian company. Oh, okay. they're, they're founded in 2016 and based in the Ukraine. Hmm. So, you know, who knows what kind of deal that means. But uh, it's, it's, they say it's going to be very similar to GeForce Now, you can pay a monthly or annual subscription fee, and then you can use it to play free-to-play games or games they've already purchased on Steam, the Epic Game Store, or other digital game stores. That's where, that's where Google really screwed up, was making you purchase everything through their service to where you're, on some things, buying the game the third or fourth or fifth time even, depending on the game, and... And then saying, okay, well, and if this thing crashes, well, you know, they did give refunds and did all these things. But going into that, you didn't know that that was going to happen. So this is going to be where you can upload and install 
at 1080. It's it's going to be 1080p, 60 FPS. Uh, now, G, they do compare GeForce Now has an ultimate tier which has 4K up to 120 FPS. I mean, if you're really needing to do competitive 4K gaming in, at 120 frames per second, I suggest you don't do it over a cloud streaming service. Yeah, because that's now, that's not the ultimate way to do it. So, uh, I, I, so explain this to me. So, is this are is this the equivalent of them? renting you a virtual windows machine where they're streaming the content to you or is this the or is this something proprietary like stadia where you're it's on their own infrastructure is this just a windows com- or some sort of uh computer that you're renting with a d- graphics card no i'm pretty sure that this is going to be on their infrastructure okay so uh and so i think that that's going to be the big change you know they're renting something on your own hardware there's a lot of limitations internet connections everything else this is going to be where I think they're going to be providing uh, a cloud gaming. So it's actually going to be in the cloud to PC video games. Whether that changes, this is all things that they're doing to try to get the sweetheart deal passed through in the EU to get them to say, hey, look, we are, we're not greedy. <laughs> please pass, please uh, pass this deal. Uh, but this is going to be low latency cloud gaming uh, that's going to be throughout you know, all these different data centers. So. We'll see. It's Microsoft, so I expect it to be big. They're not going to do this halfway. But how many people are really going to use this? I would think that this is good for people that don't have good internet connections, you so, could, you know, or that need something running on an external server, and then they're streaming it maybe because they have weak computers, things like that. Yeah. But so this w- so this is not like Stadia in the regard that you have to use their platform to buy anything. You can no. run any game on Steam or Epic or anything else. So you are just renting. Well, I don't know. They, I'm sure they have some limitations. I bet you they let they you don't. link your account. Your, your account. No, it looks like, look at games launch on our high-end remote gaming rigs and gameplay is streamed to you. Enjoy platforms, Steam, whatever the hell this thing is, and Epic. So this is, this is bet- the equi- equivalent of a, just of renting a computer. It's not you're not going to see a Windows wallpaper like a Windows yeah. desktop, but but seemingly any but I, game. But I bet you they authenticate run. your purchases to make sure that the license is good. So I bet you they have you connect your Epic account, Maybe. your Steam account, yeah. then they verify verify that you own the legal license to that, and then they'll let you stream it. Yeah. yeah Says unlimited I mean, gaming sessions. Who knows? It's kind of a yeah. so, you know, looks like a good devices. deal, especially for stream directly to youtube with it i mean it's pretty interesting um these that you know there's just an inherently a huge problem with these services um you know the, the pricing isn't terrible um Mm-mm. but is there a is there a a huge group of people that are wanting to play these games and this is their only option because i mean let's be honest brian eight dollars a month is no, is nothing to um, is nothing to 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 uh just push off. I mean, eight dollars a month is a, yep. is a is a pretty sizable subscription service in the grand scheme yep. of all of your other services. So, yep. And you also have to still own the games as well, right? You have to own them through yep. one of these platforms. I just find it odd that Microsoft is doing this when. I mean, I guess you're right. Maybe they just assume that this will buy them more good grace with their uh, with their mm-hmm. regulators that they're dealing with. Because from a business standpoint, they essentially already offer this. Now, it doesn't allow you to play every game yeah. ever, but this this will uh, this will allow that to to take place. And they and they also did a similar deal with GeForce Now. So this yeah. is something they're locking down. All these saying, "Hey, look at we're all these people are safe. We've locked all this down." And I, I, I really think that the big client for this is going to be people that have low-powered devices, that don't have the ability, that don't have a video card that can play most of these games, because you'll be able to hook a tablet up to it, put hook a controller up to your tablet, and have that be your screen and play it. I think but, that's going to be the the big client for this. But 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 let me say let me let me throw this at you. If I'm a mobile gamer. There, I would argue that I'm going to have a better experience playing a FPS mobile game that is optimized, made for, and played on like the the um, the Diablo was it Diablo the, the Diablo yeah. mobile game the game was freaking awesome. Immortal, I mean, because it was yeah. yeah. Now, if you tried to stream Diablo to your 
tap your iPhone. You'd be pissed. And the experience would suck. So that's what I'm yeah. I'm wondering is who exactly who exactly is this? I've never met a person okay. that uses this. Any of Think these of this services. situation. Think of this yeah. situation. I have I have three boys that mm-hmm. are at an age where they can play these games. I have a huge library of games on all those services. I could hook up this, give them each a tablet with the Xbox or a PlayStation controller hooked to it, and then say, here's how you play. Because these are all PC games. I don't yes. have, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give them three different computers to play across the house at the same that's time. Okay. I can give them a low power device because you can get a tablet that's 60, 70, 80, 90, a hundred dollars oh, yeah, that bought. will, yeah, that will stream these type of things. Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is hook a controller up to it using Bluetooth. And for them, they get all these games. It's not running it slow. It, it's going to run it at full speed. Maybe there'll be a little latency because of the Wi-Fi. But really, it's going to give them an opportunity to play games that they normally wouldn't be able to play on a tablet. Or, you know, I'd have to give them a computer with a reasonably decent video card, which is almost impossible nowadays, to be able to let them play some of these games. Now they can. They can play Red Dead Redemption on PC. Well, not that I'm going to let them play that at their age. But whatever it is that, that they wouldn't be able to play on that little cheap video card that's currently in the system in their room, mm-hmm. they're going to be able to play it on this. Would you actually do something like that? I've I've actually considered it for okay. uh, letting them stream I, whether how I do it, but the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, letting that's them what I'm once thinking. they come out once they come out the family account. Yeah. What I'm gonna, what I plan on doing was giving them each a tablet that they can play on with a controller, and then they'll have the ability to stream the Game Pass. Right now they can't. They have to log to log into my account. There's just a big pain to it, but mm-hmm. they can install the Xbox Game Pass app. And then stream anything that's on that Game Pass that you know has the ability to go do the remote play, and it'll work. Or if I want to play on my Xbox in here without being in the room, I can do a remote stream to that from my Xbox console to the device as well. I just think it hmm. for what they're doing, they don't. I'm not worried about them losing a match because it was slightly lagged here and there. Yeah. But it allowed them to all play at the same time without taking up the TVs and being loud out there. Uh, they can each sit on a couch and sit there and play together with headphones. Yeah. So, so, okay. So you exactly, so making my point there, like once the Microsoft family, which plan, which I still don't know why it's not available in the U S once the US, that's available, yeah. um, then it seems like something like this is just, and I guess you could say the same thing about GeForce now. Um, yeah, but it's, but again, GeForce now is different. You're talking about people on PC streaming PC games. The Nvidia shield is an expensive device. It's like freaking $250. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a damn yeah. powerful computer or essentially a computer that that people are buying. So interesting to see uh maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of old, uh, s- uh, uh grease in the skids there for the, for the old regulators yeah. to be like, "Hey, look at us. We partnered with a Ukrainian company. You can't possibly tell us no. I mean, everybody loves yep. Ukraine." <laughs> so uh so we'll have to see what happens there with old uh with old Microsoft uh with old Microsoft. Speaking of Microsoft, Brian, I do yeah. believe that um, our last PAX, which was in 2019, is likely to be our last trade show. And I say that because yeah. we did take a look at maybe attending E3, and uh, that is becoming less and less interesting. GDC is over in Europe somewhere, and it's just so unfeasible to go there. But uh, Xbox has confirmed that they will have zero, count it, zero presence at the show floor at yep. E3. None, which is yeah. huge. They now for years and in years past they've done their own events. They haven't done the big keynote at E3 that they have done for, you know, 20 years, but now they're yeah. just they're not even they're not even doing it. I mean, they're just they're done. Yeah, and this seems to be the trend. They're not the only ones. You got Xbox not showing up, you got Nintendo not showing up, and you don't have uh, Sony showing up either. <laughs> so, I mean, who's really showing up? Uh, at this because the big ones aren't aren't showing up to this and showing no presence as you said so that's kind of a new thing it used to be that the draw you'd have all these small groups that are here but the draw really was the big announcements from the major gaming studios or you know this is going to be microsoft and you know with them having blizzard and all of this there was going to be some sort of announcement that they were doing here to of a game that hasn't been discussed yet yeah, who's going to show up to E3 when it's all a bunch of small studios that people don't realize yet? It's going to be the hobbyists, 
the the ultra fans, people that are just wanting to get together to nerd out for a weekend. Uh, and I don't see you getting the big press uh, pools showing up because what are they going to go go and cover? Here's the problem: Small studios. The events in freaking Los Angeles, the indie studios, and the and the regular people can't afford to go. It's too, it's too damn expensive. Yep. I mean, you just you can't afford yep. to get. It's too expensive to go to L.A. Um, so yeah. I, I do. So I'm glad you mentioned that because I think about it like the 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 a shopping mall model. You had shopping malls that were surviving because they had anchor stores. You'd have yep. a department store, there. J.C. Penney, a coal, whatever yep. it was. These huge. 500,000 square foot retail stores, those were the anchors. Then throughout the mall, you had the the, the hat shop and the shoe shop and, and all of those things. And when and we saw the same thing with shopping malls, when all those big anchor stores said, we don't need 500,000 square feet, nobody's buying anything, now malls are just shutting yeah. down. And Epic owns one yeah. in freaking North Carolina. They bought a whole damn mall and it's turning it into their it campus. It works, works out for them. So... <laughs> It's a, to me, it's the same thing with E3 is yep. my, Sony or uh, Nintendo has been gone for years. They've been doing their Nintendo Direct for years and you kind of expect that they do their own thing in, in, in Japan and, and that's that's how they want to do their thing. More power, more power to them. When they did the. When I'm trying to remember who it was first, Dan. It was, I think. Microsoft that first started doing their own separate events like their showcase thing separately yep. and then sony dipped out and now you essentially have ea um uh ubisoft mm -hmm. uh digital revolver or whatever the pc studio is that publishes all those games and that's about it yeah that's not big yeah enough. and that's yeah that's gonna be there's not enough draw and there's not going to be enough announcements to to keep the press going on it. And E3 was one of the biggest. And we we've seen the changes even in packs over the years and kind of the traffic that's going there. Yeah. The type of things that they're hosting. Of course, COVID really threw everything for a loop. It did. With all of a sudden the type of people that go go to these conventions were now scared to be able to sit there and, and, and arrive at a place <laughs> with a bunch of sweaty other, you know, people that the, where you're, the, you're so close to each other, you're rubbing elbows, yet you're wearing a mask worrying about somebody touching you or talking to you. Yeah. Hi, I'm going to breathe on your neck when you're waiting in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that was PAX. And so yeah. I think that Unless you were that really like us. hurt. Uh, yeah, that yeah, we, yeah, we, we, we just, just skipped the line. Up. Kind of big deal. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing to see here. But so... Um, they do know that they are going to be part of E3's digital week, um, and mm -hmm. and doing some doing some stuff there. But um, but but that's it. And um, yep. you know, I do think that an event like PAX, same thing, um, is just it's just trending outwards. And and let's let's be yep. let's be honest about it as the as the economy continues to ebb and flow and there's still, and there is so much uncertainty, you know, when you've got a massive company like Sony or Microsoft, they are spending millions of dollars for the, for, for these events. In some cases, yeah. tens of millions of dollars to put these events together. By the time you fly out staff, you have to have these custom yeah. stages built tens of millions of dollars. That is a hard, hard thing to justify when yep. you already have a video production team. You already have a video studio at one of your headquarters. You can just do it yep. there yourself. That's what Nintendo's been doing. They just stand in, it's literally yep. a freaking white room, and some guy stands there and talks about their games, and they cut to a trailer. I mean, it's, yep. it's, it, the yep. cost is non-existent, essentially. So, and with all the different layoffs that have been happening recently, I, I think that that plays a lot into this. I, I think that people don't realize the amount of, of impact that the current economy has been having on these companies. Mm. Just lay off, lay off, lay off. And I, I think that for them, they're realizing, first of all, we've possibly laid off these non-essential workers that were going to go and staff this the convention. Also uh, true. You know, you're keeping on the people that have the ability to do the programming, that are keeping the place running, they're keeping the products up. Those are not the people, usually, unless there's one or two that you kind of put in there for interviews, that you're sending to an, an event like this. Yeah, most of them you're keeping them there so that if something happens, they're able to keep the the product going. So. Um, 
Yeah. So speaking of that, um, I, 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 this is this was a pretty big story this week. Uh, Brian is uh, Starfield actually got its release date, which um, yeah. is while that is Bethesda, it is m- now Microsoft. Um, so they announced uh, that the game is going to be coming to the PC and Xbox Series S and X on September the sixth of this year. Um, this is their wow. essentially Finally. Fallout Fallout Space, I guess is what you'll kind of call it. It's an RPG space yep, game. Big. Um, that it's they, supposed that to be one of the biggest on. games that they've made. Yeah, but now reading the. We, Elite Dangerous, you you can get away with a lot of things saying this is the biggest game just because, oh, I just went 100 light years in 30 seconds. Okay, that's a shirt big. <laughs> but we'll see how actually actual big it is. It says right here the, in the Tech Radar article, Starfield is set to be released later this year. It's the first new IP in 25 years for Bethesda mm-hmm. games. This uh, uh, this is a pr- this will be approaching um, Cyberpunk, Red Dead Redemption and GTA levels of hype and enthusiasm. Yeah, the shake the dice and and roll them, Brian. Hopefully they've got their shit yep. together on it because we have seen, God, have we seen some awful launches the last couple of years. Um, so yeah. that we'll have more on that as we get into the spring and summer months. But uh, September the sixth of this year, uh, uh, Starfield will be out on the PC and the Xbox. Sony copes and seethes as they uh, as they don't get access to it on PlayStation. But hey, if you're Microsoft and you spent, I mean, how many? I don't know how many billions they spent on uh, on Bethesda. Developer. No, well, not yeah. on development. On buying oh, you're Bethesda. talking about even sorry purchasing. Yeah, the yeah, whole studio. You, you, it's it's your studio now. Uh, screw Sony. I mean, give them the big old double barrel middle finger shotgun. I mean, it's just it's it's over. It, it, it's our studio yeah. now. It's our game. Suck it. Yep. I mean, that, that's it. Well, and that's that. That's the crazy thing is you look at PlayStation, I just really feel like they feel so entitled. <laughs> they think, oh, it, it, you have to put everything on our platform. Yeah. No, they don't. We've talked about this before. You don't put anything else on their platform. Why should they or anybody the else's favor platforms. to you? Yeah. Yeah, you don't put out, you, you put, you have the most exclusives in the industry, and, and you're telling me that they, everyone has to share with you. You're like the bully on the playground when it comes down to it. Yeah, pretty, pretty wild. Um, so, so there you go. Um, yeah, that's that's Starfield. Not not much outside of the uh, outside of the announcement there. Um, there's an interesting story that made its way to our Discord story this week, Brian. Surrounding the Korean yeah. police and raiding a game studio. What's uh, what are the details? What's what the hell's going on here? Well, we had somebody, one of our listeners, suggest last week that we go check out a game called Dark and Darker. Yes. So we put it on the list of things to keep an eye out on and go check it out. And then, of course. <laughs> Very quickly after the last episode, two days later, <laughs> two, two days we, later. <laughs> we get we get a notification that says a raid followed ongoing accusations from Nexon that the studio stole game assets and staff. <laughs> so this is uh, Dark and Darker's creators, a studio called Iron Mace, and they have seized company material related to the game. And of course, this is in South Korea, not North Korea. Oh well, yeah! But, if it was in North Korea, it would have been like, oh, entire game studio slaughtered by <laughs> by, by the North yeah. Koreans. Yeah, not a not not a good story at all. Wow. Of course, they're denying the allegations, but I think this will be something fairly easy to to prove or not prove. Whether or not an animation, I mean, there are things that you can see to whether, and this happens fairly often. I was actually watching a YouTube video this past week about a lot of the audio sounds that are get stolen and then posted on places like the Epic game store or on these mm. private stores where you have, uh, animal sounds, for instance, was the one that they showed. And, Cause there was a, a free, one of those free giveaways that Epic gave out ended up. They have to, had to retract because the person stole them from a place and was re- repackaging it. And this wasn't animal sounds, but it was like magic sounds and, and, and things like that. Uh, but this is a big problem because how do they check? Because sometimes they'll change the the sound a little bit. They mix multiple sounds together. How do you prove? But here, with animations and things like that, a lot of times you can set something side by side. Just like with the sound, you can lay them out in an audio editor and see how it follows the exact same path with the modulation and everything else. And I think that's probably what they'll do. And if they acquired staff and that staff brought any assets over, that's an easy thing to prove. Now, ideas, that's a harder thing to prove, and we'll just have to see if that's what they claim in court. So 
is it safe to say that we won't be tracking uh, the latest details at Dark and Darker? It seems like development's probably put on hold for a little bit. I would assume for a little bit. I'm not sure how their laws work over there. Yeah. But we'll see if they, they claim that it's all... Now, when they say striking similarities, that's one thing. Uh, at what point does it cross copyright? Uh, they don't, I don't know. They probably don't have a patent. There's certain things that you have to cross to be able to say what well, they stole and because there's a lot of games that are very similar to each other how do you prove that it, that's where i say if it comes down to the assets being stolen that's a big deal or if they brought something with them and said hey let's put this in the game i made this um, that could be a big problem for them now i don't know anything like literally zero about south korean politics so this it could be the most corrupt country in the world um, now, I do know that Nexon is a very big developer, and there is a possibility that they yeah. have some significant weight to push around. However, South yeah. Korea is somewhat of a democratic system. I would imagine that they would have to have some pretty good evidence and some pretty good stuff to provide to a judge or to a to a investigator, whoever it might be, for them to raid an office. Now that uh, could be it could just be the Nexon is so big they just say hey we hey snap your finger this needs to be done get on it but I doubt it it's, I, I don't think that's well the here's case. how it kind of started so yeah. the Nexon reported that leader A in August 2021 uh, for leaking company data and assets while working remotely during the pandemic oh then wow. they turned the case over to the district prosecutor in August of 2022 okay which demanded the police find more evidence in December uh, and then. The Korea Junang Daily shared a message from Nexon that was issued to employees on Wednesday saying it had verified Leader A, now I assume they're just labeling them as Leader A, leaking thousands of files, including source codes and builds. We also mm -hmm. found that Leader A had suggested to a two teammates of the P3 project that they quit the company and work together on a game similar to P3, citing outside investment sources and more. So, so it seems pretty... pretty the, pretty reputable process here <laughs> and this is fairly common you'll have somebody who says i don't like how this is being done and then they'll say oh well let's go make our own in the way that we want to do it because it's somebody disgruntled that's upset that the ideas aren't going in the exact way for the game that they wanted to have uh and so here if he if they to this level to where they were leaking game assets then that's going to be a, a problem for him it, assuming later leader a is, is a male Yes, uh, yes, that will be a significant problem. You just described, Brian, the entire uh, PC clone revolution. Uh, so, yeah, we don't yeah. like the way that HP's or IBM is doing this. Let's go start Compaq yeah. or, uh, or or uh, Gateway or yeah, one of these make, other uh, companies. However, yeah, let's make the uh, clone, x86 but, but, clone. But funny enough, but you mentioned that part of all of those companies and the reason companies like Compaq and whatever didn't get sued into oblivion is they never touched an IBM chip. They never tried to they never actually cross-referenced an ibm manual to do anything they just did it yep. based on how the software worked so yep, they made um, their own so, so if they're they doing something own, like yeah. that then there's it, nothing they can do this if does not, he stole assets and case. did all this it, yeah it sounds like he went above and beyond to go to yeah he stole level. this stuff uh so <laughs> uh it's on the list uh but it's uh, i guess temporarily on hold pending uh some some legal investigation uh some legal investigation over in uh over in uh, South Korea. So uh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Originally, thanks for the, the tip last week. And then I think it was Nisco uh, or uh, somebody else put yeah. it in the uh, put it in the it Discord Nisco channel. So so thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, always appreciate it. What else we got, Brian? Well, do you want to talk some Hogwarts or you want to talk furries? What's the difference? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> They're all the opposite sides of the same coin, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, let's, what a... let's talk furries for a minute because this isn't going to be very long. But one thing that the furry community is really running into an issue on is they are dropping the vaccination requirement to go to their convention. Oh, And this no. is something <laughs> because if you look at the, you know, this will segue right into the, the Harry Potter things because that all started because of a brony convention uh, founder. But, you know, in their politics and how they're very different than... Uh, than the author of, of Harry Potter. So here, they've got a, a furry convention coming up, and it's going to be May 11th through the 14th. So it's, it happened. It's set to take place and ends today. So it'll be interesting to see you know, how many articles they write. 
this person died because they went to this convention. You know, this is what they did last time. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you can't really prove that one way or the other. And if you go to this, there is somewhat of a risk, regardless of, you know, the, the surpriser is right. that sorry, this, regardless this of whether you're May. vaccinated. Oh, sorry, May. I was, I, was, Mar- I was, sorry, not March, May. So in a month, they're going to be doing this convention. Uh, now, this is the thing is, Having the COVID vaccination, according to the CDC, and the you know we got to love, we got to put in our disclaimers, does not prevent you from getting the getting COVID. Correct. So I mean that's that's yeah. that's the that's the reality. And so yeah, and- how is this going to prevent? If you're worried, wear a mask. They're already wearing masks. Have a mask under your mask. This they have fur. They're not even able to touch each other. With their wow. actual skin, because they're fully covered. Well, until later, uh, yeah. <laughs> they're fully, <You> know. <laughs> they're fully, they're fully covered in these dog outfits. Just make sure you keep it clean. Uh, wash it when you're done. I don't know what you do, right? Um, bring some yeah. antiseptic and spray yourself down. Like you're, if you're going to be sitting there rubbing against people, right. well, you're <laughs> putting yourself at risk. I mean, what do dogs do? <laughs> Jesus, Brian. Um, I do want to read, and this is pretty amazing to come from Kotaku. Uh, Brian, I want you to just imagine, I want you to hop in a time machine and go back a year and a half, and if I read you this sentence, yeah. it's two sentences, you would not believe it was from Kotaku. The convention was originally going to require a negative test in the place of a vaccine requirement, though neither a negative test nor vaccination prevents attendees from catching COVID at the event itself. Oh, good. That's now not we're what safe. I was told. They, they, they That's said what I was it. Told it wasn't me that said it. two years. Two years. I mean, we weren't allowed to say that on YouTube. uh, Oh, two, three, what? A month ago? Two months ago? We (laughs) weren't allowed to say this. But all of a sudden, two weeks ago. (laughs) Now all of a sudden, we're allowed to say this on YouTube. Thanks for the truth and reality of all of it. So it says that the more effective nucleic acid amplification test, the NAT, terrible acronym, normally costs between one and two hundred dollars, and federal funding for coronavirus emergencies, which, by the way, will be ended by Joe Biden on May on May the eleventh. Um, was going to be a huge out-of-pocket cost prohibitive for both attendees and the convention itself. And to that, Brian, I say, so what? So the cost of somebody's life is more than uh, is is a hundred dollars essentially? Because if you're worried about the health, no, I'm being serious. I'm not trying to be a. Yeah. I'm pr- I promise, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm I'm say- yeah. genuinely saying, if we are so deathly concerned of this thing, and we're gonna say, but. The cost of this test, a hundred dollars, is just cost prohibitive. So somebody's life well, is worth a hundred bucks. Okay, that's fine. I can you, I can handle h- that. Just as long as we're yeah. on the same page, sure. Well, and that's the thing is these are, have to be taken within a certain amount of time beforehand. I assume at a hundred bucks, this is a pretty expensive test. I don't know if it would be an instant test, like I'm some sure of these. But the problem they ran into is the tests that they were using were so inaccurate, where it only mattered to them when they started having sports teams all of a sudden not able to play because they test one day positive, next day they were negative, next day they were positive, next day they were negative. They're like, oh, well, you know, we still want them to play. All of a sudden they're negative. Let's, you can play. You're safe. Uh, get a better – I called this out, I don't know how long ago. At the very beginning of this, I feel like, halfway through that year of code being out, saying the tests that they're doing are not accurate. The amplification tests that they did to amplify the virus and see they, they did them way too many intervals and you could, an old cold would trigger you having COVID. So what good is that if they're just saying half the people that take this test get COVID regardless of whether they actually have it or not? Now. Get people to not care anymore because they said, like, I didn't feel a thing. Yeah. The backlash on this, Brian, is hilarious to watch. All, I'm, I'm, while you're talking, I'm scrolling through Twitter. And it's just yeah. like, what do you mean? You, this is, it's utterly infeasible for disabled or immune to compromised people to attend your, attend your con, I guess. Decreased access to testing is absolutely no reason to stop requiring a booster, but like, do whatever you want. Well, that's, <laughs> Jesus. that's, that's the thing. If you're immune, immune compromised, right, you, you have a high risk of, death or serious serious ill you know, ailment if you get something like this why are you going to, going to go to a place where you're packing in people to a convention like this i understand that you want to be inclusive you want to have everybody be able to have access but if you're really that concerned this is something that i just don't think it, it 
you can't keep tiptoeing around this forever. You're going to have to treat it like like the flu. If you're if you have the flu, stay home. Right? Brian, and this is something they should have done with COVID in the beginning. If you have COVID, stay home. Um, you know, and that's what this test is supposed to find. But if the tests are inaccurate, then what's the point? Fur cons are going to become super spreader events, not if, yeah. but when they follow suit with this policy. Please, for the love of God, get vaxxed and bring an N95 when you go. Because at this point, nobody's going to protect you but yourself. Well, first, I agree with that last statement the entire time. I mean, this was never about, this yeah. is always should have always been about protecting yourself. But uh, I would recommend, there'll be a link in the show notes. You can go and read all of these uh, freaks on the internet uh, commenting about how this is the worst thing that they, that's ever happened to them and how and this one guy goes, can I get my money back from my deposit on my hotel? Well, since you didn't book your hotel through the freaking convention, probably not. That's You're going to have to take that up with the hotel. I mean, geez, these people yeah. are just so stupid. Well, and we'll see. We'll see where they go. I mean, it, it, it'd be interesting to see what the numbers are, how many people actually feel this way, because there's a lot of people that are incredibly low risk of 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 having serious side effects from COVID. Of course. If, if you look at certain age demographics, they have very low risks of having any serious complications. Those people, I would say, have uh, be, would feel much more comfortable going to something like this, wearing an N95 mask under their suit, and, and going and washing your hands regularly. We had... My, you don't have to wash you know, your hands. Our, You're in a f- you don't have hands. You just, you well, if you go to the bathroom, we try to wash your hands a little bit. Um, yeah. We had one, one of our youngest, well, our youngest, that's not the baby, he got pink eye last week. That's incredibly easy to pass, and no one else in the house got it because we made him wear goggles, which is the equivalent of a mask, and then he, we made him wash his hands constantly, gave him his own towel to dry his hands off, just followed certain procedures to prevent it from being passed to other people. Now, that's someone who you know is sick, and you're doing that to prevent passing. Here, if you're sick, stay home. If you're not sick, wear, do some basic precautions, and, and if you're immune compromised, then don't show up. Stay home. It's not worth your life to go to a furry convention this year. Yeah, hopefully never again either. Maybe, maybe all those things will just go away. That would be a great maybe, solution. Maybe that, yeah, maybe it'll make you realize you don't need them. Yeah. All right. Or um, a date with a real person. I'm not even going to attempt to touch that one. That's a, yeah, that is a ticking time bomb. All right, so we're running out of time here. We can cover either Microsoft or Hogwarts Legacy. What do you, where do you think we go? Um, well, let's, let's end it on a little lighter note with some uh, Hogwarts. Okay, let's we do can that. we can cover some of these other Hogwarts. <laughs> I've been I always peruse to find the ridiculousness that that people are posting and, and what they're claiming on on the internet still. when it comes to Hogwarts Legacy. And it's still going. One of the best selling games that hit the market. Tons of people selling it. Uh, now someone made a Hogwarts Legacy purchase simulator, and and so <laughs> you go and you purchase you you simulate purchasing. Hogwarts Legacy, and then it will pass, it'll post messages up there saying Alabama becomes the latest state to pass anti-trans legislation. It starts posting news articles on there. Um, it, 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 I don't know. Why, why would you want to? It's just, it's guilting you when you are purchasing this in a fake environment. Right? I, I, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Oh, sure. I love sure. Harry Potter. Yeah, I, lo- I love Harry yeah, Potter. Let's, let's buy this. All right. Make uh, it love yes. Oh, oh, wow. No. Yeah. Oh, BBC, I'm sorry a... for not intervening during radio discussion of J.K. Rowling's insult during Hogwarts game. Oh, God. Oh, you bought it anyway? Oh, well, you have the right to do what you want, but I'm a bit disappointed if I'm honest. Oh, All right. That's... There's a fake wanna... chat coming up here shaming is... you. This is way too much to read. It accuses oh, look at this. you of J.K. silencing Rowling. women. Yeah. Yes. Buy more copies. Yeah, you know, and they come up with fake tweets. Okay. This is just this is just retarded. Okay. Well, that was just as stupid as I had imagined it would have been. Great. By the <laughs> way, here's a real better. headline. So, so we don't need a simulator. Here's a real headline over a Variety. Hogwarts Legacy earns $850 million. Sells yeah. 12 million units in the first two weeks. So boycott successful, go. guys. Uh, 
<laughs> really bringing home the troops on that one. Wow. Jeez. Well, uh, let's talk really quickly about an Elden Ring mod because I read this article and it seems like the way that they frame this because giant giant freaking robot the freaking <laughs> robot is the news article source. Yeah. Uh, and they say a mod Elden Ring just offered a mod for people who hate Hogwarts Legacy. Okay. So what it adds is it adds the ability for Elden Ring players to use Hogwarts Legacy elements, such as flying broomsticks and Harry Potter spells. Why would you be doing that if you hate Harry Potter? You're framing this as if, oh, I really hate them. I'm going to play aspects of their game. Is that what you do when you hate something? You then say, well, bring in the flying brooms and bring, bring in the spells that you get in Harry Potter because I want to have a similar experience in Elden Ring. Now, hold on a second, is, Brian. I need to point this yeah. out. And I think this is pivotally important. If you are taking elements of Harry Potter and put the, putting them in another game, are you not continuing the transphobia of J.K. Rowling? Because oh, she yes. apparently is the devil, and everything everything related to her IPs are transphobic. So why would these mods be bringing these transphobic elements into another video game? I mean, that's just disgraceful. They need to be canceled. Well, and here, here's how they, here's the, here's the lead into this article. Sure. Many have taken Please. a moral stand and denied <laughs> themselves the pleasure of playing Hogwarts Legacy due to the oh, IP's God. association with J.K. Rowling, who has been branded a transphobe by trans activist communities. Others have indulged in what shapes to be the next game of the year, judging by its trajectory, stating that the inclusion of a transgender NPC somewhat remedies the situation. Garden of Eyes, a gaming commodity community, decided to take the middle ground by bringing Hogwarts Legacy to uh, this game and uh, of the year and you know making this amazing new mod. I don't see anywhere where this is a bash on Harry Potter as far as the mod. It, it just I don't see it. Like you're bringing, it, it, let's say you really enjoyed, uh, let's say Lord of the Rings. And I have <laughs> yeah, a game that great has nothing franchise. to do with. I've, I've, I've a game that has nothing to do with Lord of the Rings, but I want to bring Frodo. I want to bring orcs into it. I want to bring all the different aspects of Lord of the Rings into my game. Does that mean I hate Lord of the Rings? When I'm going to be playing with all those characters and having that experience in this other game that has nothing to do with it. Brian, they, they, they use spell skin, spells, skins, wands. I mean, they're using all the elements so you can have it in both games. <laughs> There's nothing like a boycott where you use all of where you literally use the entire intellectual property as your boycotting. I mean, there's oh, this is my favorite one, Harry Potter. Yay! I hate this them. Just, this just right? goes to show you it? how brain dead these people. These people are such morons when it comes to this stuff. I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. I mean, it's just like, I you don't. That was, it was the worst. You framing, can't make it the, up the, the way they framed it. Well, and now, and I see, now see, I disagree with you a little bit. I think the I think the article frames it pretty well. They're like, hey, some people denied themselves because they're stupid because it's a great game. But the reality is everybody loves it. It's sold 12 million plus copies. It's made up nearly a billion dollars. But if you're... Go so play it in another game. Go play it in another game, even though we still hate J.K. I mean, so you don't it's give just her your in, money, yeah. It's just incompetent. Now, here's the real question. If I'm... Um, I'm trying to remember who the developer behind Hogwarts Legacy is. I mean, if I'm them, I'm I'm going after this modding this modding community's ass. I think big it's time. from software. Uh, Go after them. Yeah. This is you can't you can't just rip off intellectual property like this. You you have a game out that has all these things. It sounds like they just ripped the models from the games and put them in Elden Ring. Yeah, now, I'm and okay so I'm with sure modding. I don't have issue. a problem with modding, but you can't just rip off all the elements of the game skins, and put it in You're yours. using their icons. You're using yeah. all the names of the spells. You're using IP. That's all intellectual yeah. property. Of J.K. Rowling and, and whatever you know the, the studio that you're turning around and stealing, uh, and and guess what was going to be really hilarious if he is doing this because he's an anti J.K. Rowling. It'll be funny when they get sued and then have to end up paying some money to them for making this really hateful thing, and she gets even more money. You, know, you didn't buy the game, but you ended up giving her a hundred thousand dollars in a lawsuit. Wow, for this is uh, he's stealing. This is crazy. I mean, I, I I didn't think it could be any stupider. But I'm constant, Brian. Every week, I'm amazed with the <laughs> the uh, twisting of. I, is do, do other are there people that are really buying this? Like, is there genuinely people that are like, yeah, man, yeah, man, this is me pushing it to the man, man. Are, like, really, these yeah, people I'm gonna really buy, exist. I'm gonna buy the 
Virtual Simulator. See, I bought it. No, I didn't. Ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. You fake bought the game and shamed yourself. <laughs> oh, you were gonna buy it, you jerk. I mean, it's it's like it's more of convincing you because you really want it. It's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the buying simulator. Oh, they made me feel so bad about myself. I hate myself. Oh, look at me. I didn't buy it today. That's all this comes down to, right? Really? I mean, why else would you have a buying simulator that shames you and shows you a bunch of articles and says, Oh, you bought it? Well, I don't look I don't I think you're a bad person. That's all this really comes Holy down crap. to, right? <laughs> It's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, it really is. It's it's the me- the the mental gymnastics that go on to make this stuff make sense in your head must be exhausting. Yeah. Must be absolutely exhausting to live in this universe. I can't imagine. Well, and here, so the gamer has an article because this is something that uh, is kind of an issue. Why are you covering Atomic Heart? Because remember, we talked about Atomic Heart, which has things, you know, Russia. I've yeah, that's the Russian it. Ukraine. Yeah, the big big controversy in that one. Yeah, why are you covering Atomic Heart when you boycotted Hogwarts Legacy? Well, ah. because the trans community is more of a religion. They don't really care about the war. They like to put it on their, you know, their little emblems and have the flag up there on their profile. But the the trans part is their religion, and so I think here, you know, they're saying, well, why aren't you mad about this? But you're mad about this. Well, they're less concerned about a war. They're more concerned about you know somebody saying that they believe that women are women and you know you can have somebody who identifies as something else but that doesn't make them that right that's pretty much all her statement was was that pretty exact much. type of a statement uh but you know hey let's uh not don't worry about the war happening that we're spending billions and billions and billions of hundreds of billions of dollars in uh and i i, I understand but i think everything has to be so much politics and that's why we kind of revamped the, the shows because everything in gaming seems to be tied to politics now. It, it, we're not, at, I said this last week or the week before, we're not at war with Russia. Now, they shot down one of our drones that we were spying on them with for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know what's going on with that. Here, that's a whole bizarre Earlier story. today, whatever that was. Yeah, but, you know, we're not at weird. war with Russia as of this moment. And so why are we so concerned with the war? We went into Afghanistan. Did we? Did everybody get pissed at us and say we're not going to deal with America anymore because we went into an Afghanistan? Well, if you talk to an Afghani person who is sympathetic with that, with their cause, I bet you they'd be pretty upset that you know they that we went into Afghanistan. Mm. Uh, you know, it's all perspective. And here they're saying, well, you have to have this perspective, just like with the trans debate. You have to have this perspective. There is no room for debate, just like you know COVID being talked about on YouTube. There is no debate. You're not allowed to have an opposite opinion of what we believe. That's what it comes down to. And this is the exact same thing. You're not allowed to have an opinion on Hogwarts Legacy. You're not allowed to have an opinion on Atomic Heart. You're not allowed to have an opinion on COVID. And we'll shut you down. That's what the Twitter files really exposed, is them making you think that your opinion was the minority and no one else thought like you because they shut you down. Yeah. Pretty remarkable. Um, Yeah. And let's see. There was... One more thing that people may be interested in, if they want to hear the actual words of J.K. Rowling and not just all of the talking points that you keep seeing people push, mm-hmm. they, she has a podcast where they called The Witch Trials of J.K. Rowling. And this is something where she talks about her opinion on this. Uh, and it's, they, did, they started these episodes in the last, you know, last couple of weeks. But if you're interested in hearing her, her opinion on why she believes what she believes, and get the other side of it because you've heard the other, you know, one side of the conversation on every single gaming blog that's out there and news organization. Mm-hmm. Go and see what what her opinion and what what her thoughts are, and that way you can make a a a common sense, actually educated opinion of whether or not you want to support her, not just the buying simulators. Oh, this led to this, and it's all fake headlines. Look at both. What did she actually say? What did that cause? Who is that hurting? Anybody? Look it over the level head and figure it out for yourself. Just like with with the war, just like with COVID, go fig, go do some research and figure out what's really happening and see if you can make some sense of it and quit listening to the talking heads tell you what you're supposed to believe because obviously there's a lot of lies going around. Yeah, I just but that doesn't that doesn't fit the narrative, Brian. So we're just gonna have to move on. I know. 
that's just uh, hmm. that, that that's too much. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of moving on, we are uh, we are out of time. So uh, where can yes. people find you uh, on on the interwebs? Well, if you want to find me, you can find me at Brian Aldridge on Gab Parlor, Getter Truth Social, at Boise Computer on Twitter, and of course my blog biteoftech.com. If you go to our website, maybe you want to join our Discord server, uh, get to be a part of our politics channel, or maybe play some Arc on our Arc servers. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. We don't really talk politics so much on the Arc, so if you join Arc, uh, you could just play Arc and not have to think about politics. Uh, but we have a news channel in there as well, which is a great place if there's perhaps a story you think we're missing. Maybe you can add some context to things that we're discussing. Post a link in the news channel, and it's called Show News now, and then that way you'll be able to uh, to put it in where we can review it before the live show. If you want to watch the live show, you can do that through Twitch or YouTube, and also we have it on Rumble now that you can watch video of. Um, uploaded and then audio only is not live just like rumble you can go to the lower right hand side and listen on a low bandwidth device on whatever platform you feel like and if it is uploaded that means you can go to the particular show's episode uh, notes and there's a video and audio player built right into that and you can click and maybe see a video that you're you're listening to the podcast but you want to see a video that we're referencing or showing on the, the video episode go check it out in there we also have a lot of source material a lot of links to everything that we discuss so it's a great and a companion to the episode. And of course, if you want to support us, infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. Yes, absolutely. And of course, uh, as Brian, uh, as Brian mentioned, and, and we'll mention again, uh, we do have a rumble channel set up. Um, it's called infection podcast shows. Uh, that's the, that's the search term on it. Um, so we'll put a link on the website if, uh, if you're trying to find it, but uh, it is, uh, it is officially up it's on infection podcast. On- Infection Podcast takes us to our account, and then Infection Podcast ah. Shows takes us to our actual episodes. God, again, go terrible, awful yeah. UI. M- makes absolutely no sense. I had them say but, name the same thing, and it showed them side by side. So that's why I put shows on there, just so that there would be a, something that kind of showed a difference between them. Nevertheless, check it out, and uh, that's a that's a, a, a platform that we are on. Brian, uh, thank you, as always. Greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah, we you. will see you uh, next week. Uh, actually, excuse me. We'll see you next oh, wait, wait, sorry. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes, we'll see you yes, next Wednesday. That's what I was that'll, say. Be, that'll be the uh, 22nd of March when uh, we'll be back at it here live. Uh, you can check us out there. If you want to uh, check out my antics, you can uh, visit my website, nickcraig.com. You can also uh, check me out on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. As uh, Brian mentioned, if you missed any portion of today's show, head on over to our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.